Tashitalek. All right, so um, let's begin our um, second day. Uh, first of all, good morning. How's everybody doing today? I am, my jet lag is finally over, so I have a lot of energy today, so I hope to continue the great energy that Chris brought on yesterday, so let's have a great class today. Great. So, for day two, the, the focus and the theme for today is going to be mitosis. Right. But before we get into mitosis and the actual technique that we're going to be using, which is jigsaw, let's first cover the muddy points from yesterday. Uh-huh. So again, at the end of today, we'll have another muddy point for day two. Feel free to write any questions things that you may be curious about or unclear about, and we'll cover that on day three. Uh -huh. So yesterday evening, as I was preparing the class for today, I noticed that one of you put this really set of really important questions that we're going to address for the next few minutes. So one of you wrote, uh, as cell theory says, all living organisms are made up of cells. Uh, and I divided this into two potential questions. I was wondering what cell itself is made up of and what we consider cell itself to be a living organism. Aha, <laughs> But before I give you the answer, the scientific answer that we would like to propose, I would like to open up the question to all of you. Can anyone here tell us why you think cells are considered to be living? Uh-huh. And if you think about what Chris thought about yesterday on how we categorize life and what it means to be alive, can anyone here tell us why are cells considered to be alive? Uh -huh. Anyone? The <laughs> So anyone? Yes, that's one of the categories, yes, it can reproduce. Uh -huh. As we know, bacteria and True cells, which we'll learn about, I think, tomorrow, right, Chris? Is that when we're going through different cell types? Yes. Yeah, tomorrow, uh, Chris is going to teach us about the different cell types. All different cells can indeed reproduce. So that's one of the categories of something to be considered to be alive. What's another category for something to be considered to be alive beyond reproducing? Ah. 
grow, growth, excellent. Hello, Very good. Wow. Growth. Hello. Or oh, someone say, you know, respond to the environment. They respond to the environment? Yeah. Absolutely. You can indeed respond to the environment, the chemicals, all the physical properties in the environment. Absolutely. Maybe one more person. So we have grow. Functional activity. Reproduction. Functional activity. Functional, let's say the functional activity. Functional activity. activity. Func functional function, activity. Yes, function. being able to do some type of process. And that, my friends, is exactly the answer that I provide for you. Okay? Uh -huh. So, as I write, if you could please uh, translate. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, science defines cells as living because they perform processes of respiration, right? Reproduction, metabolism, and evolution. ဟာဒါဒါဒါဒီလိုက်ရာဒါမှာတယ်လိုက်ခုကြီးတဲ့ဂျရမ်မောင်ပုချီအနေပေတ်ခုရောတယ်ဒါဒုတ်ခုရော
Ahanda dana ngase zubu nana ya tapu mampu yo rezi tapu mampu yo pa imbana ko chi mampu tsopa la tene de tana tapu ngi da chi ma laka tana rimba mampu chi triyong ko arwa ko ta chaya te ko nyam ligi lika ngu na chaku yo rezi ta te ngu lang te ngi de shete rim shi nyong ko yo rezi. So I would argue that yes, all the cells within our bodies and other animals, we are indeed part of the animal kingdom. Plants and other fungi are considered single cells that make up a larger community. Right? Within a group of cells with different types of functions. เอ่อฮัมปูเรตนิสสังติน่ะนะโยชิติซามาคุซูทาปุงกังจิกังจิกังจิกตินะตะมะมันปุซุปะละตินิตุกุโยเรสตะคุซูอิมไบนะยังค
organs can make systems, and systems can make organisms. So an organism, which is multicellular, is made up of billions and billions of single cell organisms. Uh -huh. That's why I'm going to talk about the drug that I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about the drug that I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about the drug that I'm going to talk about. The drug that I'm going to talk about. Ini wampu malah jelah yang asuh kita cinten tan cingwin di cagu yoris cingwin di cagu yoris. Tapi cingwin di mana dosa ini bayar na korang ke na laya capon ta susu ala kura tha tebal ala kura. Kau cik cewa tienda ta thermben ni thermben mampu yoris. Does that make sense? Yes. Chris, is there anything you would like to add? Tapi kau anda cik tegi tu esa. Of course. Uh, even though we are calling this a, a single cell organism, I think it's important to note that if you took a smooth, like a muscle cell out and you put it in your petri dish, it would die. So yes. There, I think it's important to notice that even though we're calling this a, a single cell organism, if you took it out of its community, if you took it out of the body, it would no longer be uh, a, able to survive. So I, I think that that's uh, just an important thing to make sure that we have clear in our mind. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Are, are we calling this, is, uh, this, this cell as a single so they're, cellular they're cells, organism? So they're cells, but they depend on other cells. They can't live on their own anymore. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah because I'm asking this because the one we give the single cellular and the multicellular organisms, we have some types of single cellular yes. organisms, right? Yes. And the one we call this cell as a single cellular organism, I'm just confused to translate that. I would, I, I would no, call he it, didn't call that. He's, I would, I yeah. would, I probably would not call it a single cell organism. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a single cell yeah, which single makes cell. up yeah, yeah, a larger yeah. unit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let, let's clear that confusion. Better, yeah, yeah, let's yeah. clear that confusion. Better to leave the organism part yeah. out of that. <laughs> yeah, let's not yeah. call it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 of course, of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, no, I, I totally agree. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. And then the cause of your part of the organism said it, see him go to a chingy said that how much you think it's doing it. The city patient Madonna Yahoo so swim barwa. Cash learning as a top one chicken, the Monday pizza show stambalaya, top one chicken, Cassio or what? Then they are top one chicken, the Lena Gunyo Dugdora. That this stambalaya, they top one chicken, Gitching window, Labuya Mido, got top on Roa. Then they top on it under Gilan Shen, the Sajatan Chebaina, then she shingo, the top one chicken, the Karis Stambalaya, Ku, Mampochi like tennis to go with your parwa, Chilla Chitango, let's go with your Pamatope, then Asuke Shadrim in and Degree Shadrim Gay, a Chitapon Kanchi. Yes. Does that make sense? So yeah, this is a single cell. If I call it an organism, uh, my mistake, I would not call this an organism. It is a single cell, but it depends on other cells to be able to make a tissue, a, an organ, and for it to function properly. If we remove that cell and we place it on its own, it would not be able to survive. Aha, anda tanda dia rawat, dia nasi le, tanda dia tapon cik dia le, tapon cik dia ni, tapon cik dia ni cingu dia ulah yo pe na, ngarang nanti race, gondas dia tapon cik race, tapon cik dia tempat sopan la tanda dia tanda, ni pontret tu, dus rem sen dia tanda, dus ngan suku cik dia ni, dus cingu dus cagu yo race, rawat. Ani kaiting ngan suku dia ni, nanti tapon kan cik tuan cik cilol la siapa yang bana, kau sudut kuma race, rawat. Ni semua question dulu yo race. Having said that, there are examples of actual single cell organisms, true organisms within our body. Uh -huh. Such as the bacteria within our gut. Uh huh. 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 Uh an organism to make it more confusing, right? Uh huh. Yeah. That they call an asu chingu chicken nang la yo piki tapon chicken dengi chingu chires. Are we good? Thank you. This one, this one, see abula rocha. Okay. Good. So don't forget, every time at the end of our lectures, whenever I teach or Chris teach, don't forget to write your muddy points, ask questions, concerns, or things that you may you may be confused about, and we'll clear that up the next lecture.
Good. All right, so now that we went through our money points, let's go into our actual topic, which uh -huh. is, of course, mitosis. So before I start talking about mitosis, can anyone here tell us what you think of when you hear the word mitosis? What does it mean in biology? Anyone? <laughs> Our, our 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 organism, these bodies come from one cell, and yes. then it divides into different organs and the part of the body. Right. And that is mitosis. Why is mitosis important for <coughs> cells? Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh for me is one like uh, for repair uh, part yes, of the body. Uh, absolutely. So we have uh, we have stem cells in our body as well. So right. repair uh, a damaged part of the body. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Going back to our categories of being alive. One of them is to be able to grow. Uh -huh. How do cells grow? Uh -huh. They go through the process of mitosis. Right. You may have a stem cell, like the example that was given, a parental cell. In order to, for the organism to grow, it has to create two daughter cells, and the process of creating those two cells we call mitosis. And as our student very smartly said, it can also be done not only for growing, but for repairing damaged tissue. If you fall and you scrape your skin, well, the skin has to repair itself. And the way that it does it is by growing new cells, by going through the tissue, going through mitotic stages, and the cells repairing and replacing themselves. So it is this process of mitosis that allows cells to grow, replace, survive, and thrive within an environment. When we think of the mitotic stage within a cell, we have to think about the unit that is being impacted, which is, of course, the chromosome. And just like we broke down cells, tissues, organs, organisms, let's break down the hierarchy of 
a chromosome all the way to its DNA sequence. Uh, and this becomes very important, my friends, because during mitosis, the one unit that is being diverged or separated is the chromosome itself. So if we think about a chromosome, we can think about all the tiny little compartments that is being coiled up. We call this chromatin, which is highly condensed. This allows chromatin to coil up the chromosomes. Why do you think this is an important step for the chromosome? Why is it required? to coil up and condense the chromosome. Why do you think this is important? Anyone? Yes. Yeah, to protect and uh, contain all the DNA information. Yes, we have so much DNA, you have to be able to coil it up, condense it, and be able to fit within the nucleus, right? The nucleus is very small, so you have to be able to condense it and fill all that information in a very small amount of space. Very good, thank you. Uh huh, Lent it other is, thank you, Rigzigi Chachima Sonata, Haching Mampuyor, Mampuyo, but the and if we think about the coiling and condensation, <coughs> the compartments that are, are responsible are the histones. Anybody here know what a histone is? What is the function of a histone from your other classes? あ、はんだでかす、ジェンダチンがすぐ作ったんぼちゃいげんこうげ、ちゃちからね、ヒストンさえでよれ、それちゅうげ、ごまんずんたじゃんにょんじゅうなししゃばいなヒストンさなか
Ahanda dan dah gila sabar najis orang tu tis kurwa. Pabsi cia kasih kau yang resa. Tukar najis resa tak ko. Ngasuk ye. Tapi tanda dia ko DNA kan dah cak tampu cia sabar na pabsi cia yang gua maru arah maru. Tapi ko pabsi cia lah ya ko cak leh gua yang resa. Cak leh deh de. Cak leh balat ni. Cak leh kiri deh de. Suci gua orang history kiri gua orang. Cak leh balat ni deh de. Ane DNA nana yuk gua ku korum de. And then we can get you perhaps you would it after she'd be yours So as we continue our lectures in the next coming days with gene expression and central dogma The histones play a major role in gene expression and we will learn more about this when Chris teaches us about gene expression Uh, I think I should be digging on them Yeah, the city should look like under the new metadata. I think I should get the one in both sides go away or the court in the city down in Stambala yeah, the in all I yeah any history in the go coach a location which you do go your is thing as a sign in on in the dirt to pick up sir and it does you in the city again is good so when we think of the basic anatomy of a chromosome there are certain parts that we have to really understand and sort of remember what they are Aha, tetapi dalam kasus itu fizik kola kejasaan untuk balaya kurang gina ni niur tinggi gua ini terpecah kaji orang. So you could, for example, have chromosomes that look quite different from each other. This one is not symmetrical. This one is symmetrical. Aha, tetapi anda dah layan kasus fizik latar bina, yang show itu fizik di bina ko. When you have asymmetry, when both halves are unequal, we call the smaller section the short arm and the longer section the long arm. Easy to remember. Uh huh. And in both an asymmetrical and asymmetrical chromosome, the midpoint we call a centromere. Uh huh. That go chat 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 In mitosis, the centromere plays a very important role. This is the point of attachment. When they are separated. Uh huh. That under the zupon jig cups, and it's just a ticket chambu chagiores, carcin a ticket chambu chagiores, and a and it's his city cut tabic cups, and a corolla to catch it cut a such or what the chagiores, Jimate. And when you have a full chromosome, each half, so this half right here represents the one chromatid, and the other half represents. The other chromatid. There are two chromatids per chromosome. Aha, that 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 means that physical data by him, but that physical now the yakan ni or is that pa isho sagite la ya yakan chigche, and the isho de la ya yakan chigre is this number la ya physical la ya means that yakan ni or is. And during mitosis, we have the separation of what we call sister chromatids. Aha, that 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 means that the means that the point is chig caps, and the car so great. Kau khati kerja, khati bi kapsen asal dia la karis segera sistem balai cagui cibi kapsen dia la ya ta nacung yakang segera sister chromatid segera. So very important to remember the distinction between a full chromosome which looks like an X when you look at in a book or something, it looks typically like an X which is made up of one chromatid and a second chromatid in both asymmetrical and asymmetrical chromosomes. Mahanta tada di ngi gua res roa ngasu tapon kasa zupon nishi kapsa chetsu ngi gua di ka res na ane tanda cha chong yin bi yi chui zi tang cha chong ma yin bi yi chui zi kina la ya ane ko la ya trip cha ti ngasu ya kang se ya nyi ki trip ku yo res. Okay, are we good? Excellent, thank you. So, we can think about chromosome pairs. We in biology, we always learn that we have pairings in chromosomes, especially in uh, most animals. Other animals have other systems, but mammals, for example, have two pairs of chromosomes. Aha, that 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 that's okay. Choose the kitchen she wants to stand by. Yeah, choose the chat. It's helpful to any that that's okay. No sweet same thing by in by na. And it's choose the chat chat you go your is. Here is my question: Where do the two pairs come from? Aha. That drug is not to chat a kid is young or is chat the corn in heaven is Coming back to your knowledge of biology. Where do we get the first pair? Where do we get the second pair? 
From our parents. Yes. One pair from our mother, one pair from our father. Right? Correct. No, I don't know what to do with the dick of Saint Bernard to Chachachi and Goro, the Chatriagi, Yashiti, Pachi, Yashiti, Mother, thank you, Chesus of the Concomers of the Tari. So humans, not unlike other animals, humans have 23 pairs. Now, how does Samchi gender mother go on a Milaya, do a Milaya, Chad Nusasmi or is 22 pairs which are awesome? Uh huh. That then on a Chan Nusanity, Chiponis, she said, the dick is a Chumalako word. Does anybody know what we call the second or, or, or the other pair? Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. We call them sex chromosomes. One pair of sex chromosomes. So since we have two pairs, we call this a diploid system. Uh huh. As you continue learning biology and you start teaching this particular topic, you may learn that other groups of, uh, of animals, for example, some amphibians have three pairs or even four pairs of chromosomes. Uh -huh. But all mammals are unique in that they have two pairs and humans have 23 pairs. So now that we have established the ploidy system, the diploid system, here's my question to the class. And Talk about it for about a minute, and then we can discuss the answer. Do males and females show ploidy equally? Uh -huh. Are the pairs the same between uh -huh. males and females? So discuss it for a minute. Time yourselves. Talk about it with your groups, and then we can maybe hear from a couple of tables. Go ahead. Aha, so 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 good. Two trader chiroches, rukha rukha na trader chiroches. Tiki jela yang asumi kaashi chila ya samse songa koka tegiens. Yeah, great. Good. Thank you. No, that's okay. Thank you. Are we good? All right. Good. So, does anyone want to share with us what you think about male and female ploidy? Are they equal? Yes, no, why or why not? Uh -huh. Anyone? Yeah, Gonzo Sonor, yes, Sonny, yes, Chipare, Chipa Marue, Chepper Yore, Cariore, Sonor, yes, Akande. Oh, Chepa, Chepa Yores, and Pumo in XX, Pu in XY, Chakaris. Uh huh. In case on the session. Yes, there is a difference as the females, they have a XX chromosome and the male have XY chromosome. Yes. That is the difference. Absolutely. So whenever we have an XX or a female genotype, we call this true homology, where both chromosomes are identical to each other, right? The pairs are completely identical to each other. In the male system, which I think we all are here, we have XY, which is not complete homology. They are homologous, but they are not identical to each other. The X is much larger, the Y is quite insignificant, quite small. You said X is longer and Y is smaller. X is large, it's quite large. The Y is very small. So the joke on us is that in nature, Males are quite insignificant. <laughs> you can go ahead and say that. Go ahead. 
No one is laughing. <laughs> you guys can laugh, it's okay. <laughs> All right, good. So, understanding ploidy, this is what we call a karyotype, which we can essentially visualize all the different pairs. And just by studying this karyotype, is this a male or a female karyotype? What do you think? Absolutely. The easiest way to know is that we have an X and a Y, right? If there were two X's and the X was identical to this one, it would be a female karyotype. And one thing to note is that all these pairs are homologous to each other. They all have the same size, and they're virtually identical. There are subtle differences between those pairs, but they are virtually identical to each other. Okay, and you could also do a karyotype for any other organism. Look at their pairings. They may have more than 23 pairs. For example, certain plants have multiple five, six, seven pairs. Uh -huh. Good. So now that we have established ploidy, let's look at the cell cycle. We know the importance of cells. We learned that yesterday. Now let's take a look at the cell cycle itself. So, you can gather here, this is a cycle, a continuous cycle. We have G1, S, G2, and the one that we're going to focus on for today is what? The M stage, mitosis. Without going into too much detail, G1 is where the cell grows, it gets large because it's going to divide into two. So it has to have a replicate of all the organelles and all its nutrients. Uh -huh. So the cell gets very large, it has two of everything, and during the S stage we have synthesis. DNA is copied. DNA copies itself. And it has to copy itself because the product of mitosis are two daughter cells and each cell has to have the equivalent of one half of the parent. So it has to have two of everything, two DNAs, one for each daughter cell. And during the second gap, you have the checkpoint to make sure that everything is working well before mitosis. It's also important to note that if you take out mitosis, G1S and G2, 
these three components, these three steps are called interface. Uh -huh. Most of its time, a cell is not dividing, it spent most of its time during the interface. Okay. So now let's focus on what happens during the M stage, mitosis. And do you remember this will come up in our activity in a little bit. What happens in the S, DNA is replicated and you have cell division during the M stage. Uh -huh. So we could very easily make a drawing. And this is what I use for my students at Emory in my university. So you are all witnessing an actual lecture that I give to my biology students. Maybe when I teach it this semester, I'll include the Tibetan just to confuse them a little bit. But anyway, if we have this drawing, right, let's think about how we can visualize mathematically this particular setup. We have large A, small a, large B, small b. So this is a diploid system because we have two pairs, AA, BB, and we have a total of four chromosomes. So yeah. this could be equated as 2N equals four. Uh-huh. And just like I asked my students at Emory, what does A and B mean? Why are they different? What is it showing? Uh -huh. And that's the question for all of you. Anybody? Yes, I, I heard it. Chromosomes, right? So you could discuss, but you all know that A and B are different chromosomes. Uh -huh. Now, what is the difference between large A and small A? I think I put the answer here by mistake. <laughs> Right? <laughs> Happens yeah. to me all the time. I'll ask my students a question with the answer on the board. And they look at me like, Dr. Reyes, you're silly. I have no idea what he's saying. It's on the board. Uh, so a, large A and small A are alleles. They're variations. Different versions of those chromosomes. Good. Are we good? Any uh, questions? We're good? 
This Excellent. ad. Perfect. Thank you. Making perfect time. All right. So, mitosis. Right. We're going to visualize what happens during this mighty M stage during the cell cycle. Good. There are five, everybody put their hands up, five steps in mitosis. And this is where I tell my students, you have to remember all five steps. And it's important not only to know the names, but what happens within the cell during each particular stage. And they're all very different from each other. The first step, number one, prophase. So as you could see, we have a single cell, parental cell, or as we call it, a mother cell, with all its organelles pretty much intact. The easiest way to tell apart prophase is that you can still make out the nucleus, the nuclear envelope of the cell. Uh -huh. And the easiest way to tell if a cell is going through mitosis is by being able to visualize chromosomes. Uh -huh. Because during interface, G1, S, and G2, the chromosomes is decondensed. You cannot visualize it. Does that make sense? Can you repeat that? Yeah, again? so during interface, G1, S, and G2, before mitosis, chromosomes are decondensed. You cannot see them under a microscope. Decondensed? Or you condensed? cannot see them. Is they're, they're not condensed. Okay, okay. Yeah. Not condensed. They're right? not condensed. Okay, okay. ตันตันเดกาสงาสุเกตุงุติเอตาทาพุทาชิเชโกละตาสตันบาลายะตุงุติเงียติกานสงีเกเรเซสตันบาลายะอะเนคุเกเอตันตันเดยอรวงาสุ
They become important because they attach where? At the centromere of the chromosome before they are separated, before the sister chromatids are separated. あ、だんだんでかすこから違うですね。こう、つさて単語しそうは、ちゃせじどわ。でもね、こう、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ
We're good? Anybody want to share your thinking on why it's important for the nucleus to disappear? Because of the cell division, everything inside the cell needs to be divided into two. Right. We need to make copies. That's why the, uh, the nuclear envelope dissolves, so it right. disappears. That, that is very good. That is important. And what about the movement of the spindle fiber apparatus? Could it move if the nuclear envelope was still present? It would not be able to move. So once the nuclear envelope disappears, you could have the, the spinal fiber apparatus move to the poles of the cell and start to attach at individual chromosomes. Uh -huh. So the attachment of the spinal fiber uh, apparatus to the um, centromeres and the chromosomes would not be able to exist if we still had a nuclear membrane within the cell. Good. Does that make sense? Excellent. So now, like I said before, in prometaphase, we still have a pretty much mixed set of chromosomes. They are not paired in any way. The next step, metaphase, what do we see? Uh -huh. Then we have the nucleus of the nucleus. Uh -huh. And the nucleus of the nucleus is the nucleus. The nucleus of the nucleus is the nucleus. The nucleus of the nucleus is the nucleus. So anybody, what do we notice about the chromosomes in metaphase? The nucleus is the nucleus. The nucleus is They are completely aligned. Right? They are completely aligned. And we call this, we call this perfect alignment the metaphase plate. So by now, in metaphase, we have complete movement of the spindle fiber apparatus at the poles of the cells. We have the attachment on the centromere in the kinetic core, right? And you have a complete alignment of the chromosomes. Uh -huh. So like I tell my students at Emory, and I'll tell you the same, the easiest way to identify a stage shift mitosis is to look for the metaphase plate. Uh -huh. If you are not able to identify the plate, you can very easily say, well, are you before metaphase or after metaphase? Uh -huh. And here is a tricky, fairly difficult question. Why is the metaphase plate important? Why is it so important for mitosis? Discuss it for uh, two to three minutes. Make some drawings if you want, and then we'll 
compare what you all think about the importance of the metaface plate. Okay, over here you have metaface. You metaface plate, yeah. Okay. Plate. What do you think so far? Good? Yeah, it's good. Wonderful. Lecture and discussion, lecture and discussion. Yeah. This is the way that I run my classes. I lecture a little bit, then discuss. Lecture, discuss. Yeah. Anybody need more time? Are we good? Anybody want more time? You guys need more time? More time? No? Anybody need, need more time? No? Are we good? Okay, who wants to share the importance of the metaphase plate? Why is it such an important structure for mitosis? Honey. Uh-huh. <laughs> At this stage, what he thinks is uh, the spindles are completely formed. Yes. And the, the, the chromosomes are about to split. Yes. And that's why it's really important. And so they're about to split. Uh, so <coughs> by having this particular linear pairing, why is that so important for their splitting? What makes them split? What is the function that splits them? that splits the sister chromatids. Uh, it is uh, to equally distribute the chromosomes to sister new cells. Yes, absolutely. I think all of you understand this, right? So by having a complete pairing, a, a, a linear pairing of the chromosomes as the spindle fibers start to retract. Mind you, remember, they're attached at the centromere, right? As they start to retract back into the, their apparatus, 
the sister chromatids are going to be separated. They're going to be diverged. And they're going to move to each pole of the cell into what will become two new cells. And the fact that we want equal number of chromatids on each pole, this makes this pairing, this linear pairing, allowing for the equal division of the sister chromatids. So once we have the retraction of the spill of fibers, we go into the next step, <coughs> which we call anaphase. So now, we no longer have the plate. The plate has been divided. It has been separated. Each subset of sister chromatids are moving towards each of the two poles. And you could imagine, you could sort of imagine on your mind that this will become one cell and this will become another cell. Mind you, we still do not have a nuclear envelope yet. We are just dividing our sister chromatids and they are moving to each pole of the cell, each extreme of the, of the cell. So like I said before, if in an exam or if you ever want to identify the stage of mitosis, look for the metaphase plate. If you do not see it and you see the sister chromatids being separated, we call this anaphase. We are in the third stage or, or fourth stage anaphase. But the most important segment of mitosis is the formation of the plate during metaphase, which allows for the separation of the sister chromatids into what will become two identical daughter cells. So you essentially have one half forming a new cell and an identical second half forming a second cell. Okay. So now beyond this particular stage, anybody know the last, the, the name of the last stage? They have everything online, so. <laughs> I don't know why I'm asking, right? We call this telophase. Right? So, <laughs> beyond anaphase, when we have the separation and the movement of the sister chromatids to the extreme of the cell, you could imagine that at some point, 
we're going to have the formation of a new nuclear envelope, mm -hmm. which we start to see during telophase. Uh -huh. That other day, because uh, digging a girl and also Jingu Cup Simbana, that Tapong and Ninja and those ten chiches who can do which are going to go to Sena, and a Koge, and this Susu Solaya, and a Dikasa, a Tininchi or a Tupuyo Palaya, some of the Gores, that and by Dikups, Tungo said Dikups, Karesena, Tapong and Ninjilaya, and a Tandanga Sugu Chizu, Sagatalaya, and a Gasugu Ninko, the Susu San Tupuyores. What is important to remember, even though we still have two nuclear envelopes, the spindle apparatus will disappear. We have two nuclei, but we still have one large mother cell. Uh huh. That under the case, when you go to the case, and I ask you, Pangzu did under the case, and you land where I was, I'm sure that you see yours. In time, I ask you, like, uh, ten years, ten years, and you trip the yours. And telophase, my friends, is considered the last stage of mitosis. Chromosomes decondense, they are no longer uh, condensed, so you will no longer be able to see them under a microscope. So the moment that you have two nuclei within this very large mother cell, we have completed, officially uh, completed, the uh, cycle of mitosis. But what is important is that we still have one cell. How do we get two cells from one cell? We have the process of cytokinesis. So what essentially happens is at the end of mitosis in telophase, once we have our two nuclei, somewhere in the middle, in the cell, it's going to twist upon itself. It's going to cleave itself, right? And in cytokinesis, once you cleave the cell, it breaks apart and it becomes two independent daughter cells. A really easy way to visualize this is if you have a balloon of air, especially those long balloons, and you twist it, you essentially can create two balloons from one balloon. And that uh -huh. is essentially what happens at the end with cytokinesis. The cell uh -huh. will cleave itself, it will break apart, and you have created two identical daughter cells. Two important things. Cytokinesis is not considered part of mitosis. And the physiology is important because now we lose the condensation and in the daughter cells they are now in interface beyond mitosis, after mitosis. Uh -huh. 
Prangu lalhe de ore ta prangu lalhe pai na prangu kena ne dirwa prangu te kare se na zupon jichi ki jail lalhe ko arwa teres. So if you see, for example, a visualization of a cell where you cannot make out the chromosomes, you are now officially in interface. You are no longer in mitosis. Ah, that 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 dinner do chi chi de teroa. Ah, kete thapung chi chi ko ola ya chonge. Ah, ah, that that dinner thapung chi chi ko ola ya. Chizu ti ngosu to bogo ne thomathi ka ga namba dinner do chi lebo yo pai na ne nethan de kapsu chonge ko ola yores na prangu la yores ne chonge zupong chi chi ko rambati gates habes. So now that we have gone through all the different steps, we can put everything together, right? We can start with prophase. You have the condensation of the chromosomes. Ah, that ngasu cha ma nyam tan rochi ta bai ma na tang poti tungu je ti kapsu kari chigores na chizu ti kanza tupun jir guyores. You have the emergence of the spindle apparatus. In prometaphase, the nuclear envelope disappears, right? And the spindles move to the poles of the cell. Aha, ta tang poti tungu kapsu ma na ngasu ge ti ti kasa. Pampanzu chiora, panzu di tapunga ninjila du strugu yore sirwa ni tamungu kapsu nga suge nyinko di kale kale ku mepar chapata ni chui karsa pangzu chiora wa di tapunga ninjila pale de yore sirwa In metaphase, what do we call this again, anybody? Ahan, dungu gana gi dungu kapsu rwa kuran gi kimalaya chik dwe chikora wa tila gala gire sirwa Plate Metaphase plate. plate, right? Uh -huh. Metaphase plate, you have complete alignment, alignment of the chromosomes. Spindle fibers are on the poles. In anaphase, they start to contract, separating what? What separates? Chromosomes. Chromosomes into what? To what? Sister chromatids. chromatids, right? Chromatids. Get the language correct. The chromosome separates into two sister chromatids. Right? Right. Chromosomes chromatids. Chromatids. Our students at Emory have a really hard time remembering the distinction between chromosomes and chromatids. It's not particularly easy to remember. It can be confusing, but let's do our best to remember that the chromosomes separate into two sister chromatids. <laughs> And then natural yakanjila categories. And then in telophase, you start having the formation of what will eventually become two daughter cells, which is completed after mitosis in the process of cytokinesis, where we now have lost the condensation of chromosomes. Now that tamgu kapsi imba na ngasula ta tamgu ke jela ya tapong ni trivia ke rambati ke gunda uchi tsugu yora re mare. Ta ta na ngasu ke tapong tripteng ke ngala ya ane tapong ni se trip sa na mase ane ko ke chweze te ane chak jilho la duya ngu tsug sa re te kapsi ngasu tapong ni trip sa re tapong tripteng sa ya de tapong tripteng de ane zupong ni chig rambat na mare is. And students usually ask how long does this whole process take? It's not an easy question to answer. It really does depend on each cell type. Uh-huh. On average, let's just give an average. They take about two hours to go from prophase all the way to cytokinesis. Uh-huh. Some cells may take as long as days to go through the process. Not uh -huh. hours, but days. It really does depend on which cell you are referring to. Uh-huh. Uh, 
Duyente and the Tapunga Rigdelayata Koshura Ligres. Any questions? Draw a yes. This is. Yeah. Uh, so, for example, like neuron cells. Neuro. Yes, neurons. So, does it go under the mitosis or if Absolutely. not, why? Uh, it really does depend on which type of neuron. Uh, would you happen to know uh, which types of neurons go through mitosis? I, yeah, I know certain neurons. For example, I'll give you a story. I broke my arm when I was 21. And I had a lot of damage in my neurons. And my neurons did uh, fix themselves through mitosis. But it took months. It took a very long time. So neurons take a very uh, slow time to reproduce and fix themselves. But yes, they do go through mitosis. Uh and there are some cell types, uh, some brain cells that do not go through mitosis. They are fixed. If they uh, injure themselves, they do not repair themselves. what is really interesting is that when I was going through my recovery, the skin that was damaged is not 100% healed. It feels like numb. It feels like it's asleep. And it's, it's going to be like that for the rest of my life. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what is the so, question? Sometimes, if you cut your finger, like uh, completely cut your finger, right? <laughs> uh huh. Then why it cannot? Uh, yeah, he's talking about why it can't grow back through my. The genes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So, uh, our bodies are able to regenerate and fix itself, but there are certain limitations. Um, if we chop the whole limb or a whole hand or even a finger, it has the inability to regenerate itself. It, we don't have the genes that allow us to regenerate body parts, complete body parts. Uh-huh. 
There are, there are a lot of limitations to how much our bodies can repair themselves. Uh -huh. And one of them is the inability to regrow whole limbs. Good. Good question. Thank you. Joy up those. That? That's Japan game back. All right, so uh, let's take a break. And after we come back, we have an activity that you are going to be working on for uh, pretty much um, the session where you're going to show us what mitosis looks like. And I'm going to tell you, this is not an easy activity. This is the exact same activity I give to my students. And they have a hard time doing this. So I'm going to welcome all of you to try it with us. Uh huh. So I'm looking forward to having this activity with you all. Uh, enjoy your break. We'll see you in 30 minutes at 10.30. Grab some tea, some chai, relax, come back, and we'll start our activity. Uh-huh.